The Meteor NF Mark 13 is one of the first Israeli tech tree jets in War Thunder, and it's got radar. Let's check it out. The Gloucester Meteor was the first British jet fighter to enter service, being operational at the end of World War II. You might think that, as the first Western jet fighter, it would have been quickly superseded by more modern designs and retired after just a couple of years. But not so much. The Meteor actually remained in production until 1955 and wasn't fully retired from service until the 1980s. What we're looking at here is the NF Mark 13 in Israeli service, the NF standing for night fighter. The Israeli history with the Meteor goes back to 1953 and continued for many years. The NF Mark 13 version itself first flew in 1952 and incorporated an airborne search radar which was, obviously, intended for finding targets at night. Israel only had a small number of these, but they proved invaluable until more advanced radar-equipped fighters entered service, and the NF-13 flew until 1970, though obviously they weren't a frontline combat fighter since the 1960s. The main feature of this plane, the radar system, was both revolutionary and also quite primitive. The Mark 10 was the British name for the SCR-720 airborne interception radar originally designed for the P-61 Black Widow in the early 1940s. Like some other early radar systems, the SCR-720 was cumbersome to operate, used multiple displays at the same time to present different information, and required a dedicated crew member. Remember, these early radar systems predate the invention of computer chips, so all this stuff was running on simplistic analog circuitry and vacuum tube technology. While we might snicker at this stuff, looking back now, in its moment, this radar was one of the best in the world. In War Thunder, the Meteor NF Mark 13 sits at rank 5 in the Israeli air tree at BR 7.7. .7. This puts it squarely in the gunslinger jet range, and only rarely will it run up against guided missiles. The Mark 10 radar is search only. It provides both the PPI and the C-scope, and it has a good number of range and angle presets. Just have realistic expectations. Remembering that the radar is from the 1940s, sometimes it has trouble finding targets even under good conditions. Still, it is useful and managed to help me find bombers in a couple of missions. For weapons, the plane gets four 20mm Hispano cannons with the full selection of ammo belts. A notable caveat here, the guns on this plane are really far outboard and you have to make a choice about your convergence angle. If you need a refresher on gun convergence, you should go watch my video about that. I'll leave a link at the end and in the description. The flight performance of the NF Mark 13 is, honestly, a lot better than I was expecting. I had figured the extra weight and redesigned nose would be a serious handicap, but this plane actually flies pretty well. Remembering that this is a first-generation subsonic jet, it climbs reasonably well and maneuvers good at medium speeds. The key there is at medium speeds. At low speeds, the controls are sluggish, and at higher speeds, they lock up. If you've flown other gunslinger jets, this will feel very familiar, as a fair number of subsonic jets in War Thunder, they share this general behavior. The top end speed isn't amazing on this one. Again, this jet is first generation. But overall, I came away from this plane feeling good about its overall flight performance. Flying the Meteor NF Mark 13 into missions, okay, there isn't actually a lot to say here. Having cannons so far out on the wings makes ground attack difficult. Not impossible, just more difficult than in something like a MiG-9 or a Vampire. And the lack of external weapons further limits its potential as a strike fighter. 
the radar gives you some capability that other planes won't have in terms of like finding bombers and stuff on larger maps but past that this is really just a basic gunfighter jet you fly out find some air targets and try to gun them down the performance doesn't give any special caveats to mission profiles and the only other thing to really say is that on the new sim maps and realistic battles the new big ones Having a radar absolutely does come in handy, especially at these BRs, and it can be an advantage, making you a good spotter for your team. Visually, this plane... Well, think of it as the stretch limo version of the Meteor, and suddenly it's not as funny looking. Unfortunately, you only get one paint skin for the plane, but it's not a bad one, and it uses the generic early Israeli camouflage pattern, which I think looks pretty good. Landing the plane is quite easy. It has air brakes and very docile handling on landing approach. Just pay attention to your throttle as the engines don't respond very quickly. And if you find yourself coming in short, you gotta crank that throttle real quick. No drag shoot or anything, so landing runs can be a little long, but still, not difficult. The cockpit, okay, not great. All the extra bracing seriously limits the visibility, and the guy in the back gets the radar scope. I didn't care for this cockpit at all, and had problems trying to dogfight in VR. Stick to the external view on this one. To close up on the Gloucester Meteor Night Fighter Mark 13. This plane has search radar, which is an advantage at this BR, and can come in handy in some missions. And it gets the sea scope. Also, the overall flight performance is better than you'd expect. However, the outboard spacing of the guns makes convergence angles really important, and targeting is a tad more difficult. And the cannons themselves aren't the hardest hitting. The final verdict on the Israeli Meteor NF Mark 13 is that this plane is a really solid entry-level jet for the new Israeli tech tree and is actually a really good introduction both to radar systems and subsonic jet gameplay. I didn't expect to see this in the game, but I'm glad that it's there. As always, thanks for watching.